pudding stones. What are they? How do we identify them? I'm in my front yard here. You may be wondering why. Uh, when I moved into this house, the owner actually left a pudding stone right at my front entrance here. Might be wondering why I don't take you inside and show you some of the beautiful pudding stones from my collection all cut and polished up. Well, I don't have any. I'm one of those people who just don't care much about pudding stones. But I am a geologist and I can tell you everything you need to know about them uh, to identify them. People in Michigan absolutely love their pudding stones. Uh, for as many people who love them though, there seem to be just as many who couldn't identify one if their life depended on it. So what are we looking for in a pudding stone? Well, first of all, pudding stones are a type of conglomerate. Uh, they're named pudding uh, because British people several hundred years ago that uh, looked like they're lumpy, ugly pudding. And so, there you go, named pudding stone. Uh, they are conglomerates. Uh, in fact, true, uh, true Michigan pudding stones should actually be probably considered a meta-conglomerate. Uh, they've been slightly metamorphosed. They are extremely old. In fact, uh, these pudding stones formed 2.3 billion years ago, long before there was even multicellular life. They formed just about the time oxygen was being put into the atmosphere. Pudding stones require a white ground matrix, all right? So the pudding, true pudding stone is going to be mostly white. You can ignore we got lichens on here, which, you know, what, whatever. You'll find those when you find them in the woods anyways. And there's moss, other things on here. A dirty sample actually shows you pretty well what a pudding stone is more likely to look like when you find it in the woods. But you need to have this white matrix. It's a white quartzite. It was a sandstone originally. Uh, and over the course of two billion years, it at some point got squeezed enough to become a quartzite. Uh, the difference between sandstone and quartzite is the, the coarse grains are kind of fused together. You won't see a real sandy matrix in there. What you'll see is just kind of this fused quartz. Most important part besides the white quartz matrix though, are these red jasper clasts. All right, critical. If you don't have red jasper in it, you can't call it a pudding stone because apparently there is something red and lumpy in British pudding at the time. And that's kind of what makes it a pudding stone. You can get other materials in there. You get some of these slightly pinkish ones. You get these dark brown ones in there. Those are kind of optional. They can be in there and still be a pudding stone. They can be absent, still be a pudding stone. But you need to have the red jasper. White matrix, red jasper. If you've got that in your stone, you've got a pudding stone. Now, very important. I see a lot of uh, posts where it's not really a white matrix, it's kind of a yellowish or orangish matrix. Well, that's common in cements. I see some that have beautiful green clasts in them, scattered about, blues, every, every color in the rainbow. Again, that tends to be cement. Um, while, while a pudding stone has a lot of white and red and a bit of brown in it, you're not going to find bright greens and blues. It's not going to look like aquarium rock all mixed together in there. But this is what you're looking for. And pudding stone is a regional word. It's not a geologic word. Uh, there are other parts of the country and other parts of the world that have got their own versions of pudding stones. Uh, and they all look different. Very often they're kind of black or brown. In Michigan, pudding stone is only this white quartzite with the red jasper in it. Now you hear a lot of people say, oh, this is a black pudding stone when they see something called a Gauganda tillite. All right, those tillites are very ancient rocks, um, about the same age as these uh, pudding stones. However, they formed very, very differently, and it's incorrect to call them a pudding stone. So there you have it. Again, white quartz matrix here. Class of red jasper. Those are the two absolute mandatory requirements for it to be a pudding stone. Often you get these other colors in here, but they tend to be dull colors. If they're too brightly colored, you're probably looking at a piece of cement. All right, I hope that helps.